Well, it's been revealed. The next-gen cars have been revealed. Now, I will say, guys, uh, my AC has not been, or the AC in the house has not been working for all day. And I just closed my door to record this, so I am burning like a damn egg on a piece of asphalt. If I start sweating mid-video, I'm sorry. But it's, it's like 90 degrees. I live in Southern, it's 90 degrees and there's no AC. Ah, the struggle. First world issues. Before we get started with the video, big shout out to the Patreon members. And thank you, uh, Jeremy, for being the new Patreon member. So appreciate that, man. And uh, if you want to help support the channel and everything that we're doing here, then, you know, it links in the description below. You don't have to, though. But if you want to, go check it out. Twitter and Instagram links are all there as well. Now let's get into it. Next Gen was revealed and we have a lot to talk about. So throughout the video, I'm going to show pictures or videos where you guys could see the car. Uh, let's just touch on, touch on the main things. Symmetrical, that is confirmed. Composite bodies, that has also been confirmed. The car looks more compact. Uh, it looks, I mean, oddly enough, actually, it looks like the mid-2000s cars just with the safety features. If you actually take a take a step back and look from the look at the car from a distance it's kind of small it's compact it looks racy that's what the mid-2000s car looks like that's everyone's favorite look for a race car and uh they're trying to bring that back with this problem is there's a lot of safety components that make the car a little bit more bulkier you know than than it used to be in the past so they're doing their the best they can basically to get back to that kind of look it looks really good. Uh, most importantly, the cars don't look very different. Kind of like how Gen 6 was announced. Gen 6 was very different between the Toyota, the Chevy, and the Ford. Uh, no matter how much the manufacturer want to say, you know, the OEMs are like, oh, our car looks like this from the from the dealership. They all look the same. No offense. The body, at least. They all, and I'm perfectly okay with that, and that's what I want. From a manufacturer standpoint, probably not. For a racing fan, that is what you want. The rear ends basically look the same. The sides look the same. The fronts generally look the same maybe the ford has a little bit more rounded front and the chevy still has that little bit of a pointed nose but most of the time you know it's still very similar so everything about these cars are and i'm going to use this word it's looking spec which i'm happy with now a lot uh, the word spec is really interesting because you get into a really careful debate of hardcore old school fans who want engineering as a top priority um and you want the cars to be different the teams to do the best they can to find certain advantages and I'm kind of on the other boat because I have F1 I'm an F1 fan some NASCAR fans aren't fans of F1 I get my technical and engineering fix over in F1 best engineers in the world are in F1 in Formula One uh, for NASCAR I've been wanting them to be spec for a while because let's face it the TV broadcast and coverage doesn't really cover the engineering and technical aspects of these cars anymore they kind of just dumb it down for everyone I just want to see some good racing the best racing that you could get usually is from a spec series. Uh, let's let's be honest. I mean, F1 doesn't have fantastic racing. They're trying to implement salary caps and restrictions to get the cars closer together to get better racing. If you want the best racing, you do have to get closer to a spec area. Now, um, key important things. Uh, we have to pull up the vendor list because um, here's the vendor list. As you can see, uh, all these parts, these teams have to purchase from these vendors. There is no more making your own parts, uh, which should close up the field a little bit. Now we've seen uh, this does not mean Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Gibbs and all them guys are not going to dominate. They still will. That's not going to be um, any different, but it's going to be a little bit closer. And hopefully, you know, you could get an RCR car to win a race or or JTG to win a race or, or, or you know, uh, a front row motorsports car to win a race other than Daytona and Talladega. You know, maybe that possibility exists. But what you'll see is hopefully the drivers have more control uh, and they're not relying basically on who has the fastest car and the fastest team and who spends the most money. That still will always be a part of this, but this is very close to spec. What's some of the best racing we've ever seen within stock car racing? It was IROC. What was IROC? It was spec. So, I mean, spec is just something that I think a lot of people should enjoy. Speaking of spec, let's go to the spec sheet. We're going to run down everything about this car. So... 193.4 with a 78.6 inches with the length and width 50 uh on the height the car is pretty small when you go from you know the roof to the bottom of it it is pretty small uh, 110 degree wheelbase there's a lot of yada yada manufactured stuff you know it's a heavy car weight 300 uh spoiler to be determined based on track type and size so as anticipated short tracks and road courses will most likely have a smaller spoiler intermediate tracks will have a larger spoiler super speedways i don't really know yet but one key note about this car that is not true about Gen 6. Body of the car will not change at a super speedway. 
So that's something that's also important to note. So the plate racing should look a lot different because you're not going to have the bumper all the way extend to the ground or certain super speedway quirks that they put on the Gen 6 cars right now. Uh, it's going to be the same car that runs a short track car. It'll just be the spoiler might be a little bit different. The horsepower is going to be different. But the car, the body of it, will be the same. That's going to greatly affect plate racing. So no matter what, the 2022 Daytona 500 is going to be very different from anything you've seen before. I don't know what it's going to look like. I'm hoping uh, we can get to more kind of old school pack racing where maybe pushing isn't necessarily the best thing to do and we could get some pack racing some strategy i'd really like that the body is composite symmetric body featuring integral integral flap systems camera mounts and oem specific design element elements if you line this car up from front to rear take an overhead shot from the roof uh or like just some ceiling you'll be able to look at it it's symmetric that's what everyone loves. Less reliant on side force i didn't hear anyone within the the announcement talk about side force or anything about that but yes if you make it symmetrical you take out the yaw side force becomes decreased a lot so that's good and then i'm not a car guy so we i'll show you guys everything else we have the underwing the chassis there's a lot of common engineering talk here that i'm not going to discuss but you can read it for yourselves uh the transmission is a five-speed manual se sequential um so yes there is a fifth gear now but it will it, you're not going to see much of a difference uh other than maybe drivers have to go through one more gear on on restarts um which is kind of cool to be honest uh but yeah there'll be track man or uh setup mandates from nascar that you won't be able to go like like, let's say the Indy 500 where you're shifting between 5th and 6th gear in the corners. That's not going to happen. There's Most tracks will have a mandate. you got to stay in 5th gear. That's how it's going to be. So, that's not gonna, you're not going to see much of a difference uh, other than pit road, entry, exit, restarts. Kind of cool, to be honest. Suspension, more car stuff, steering, car stuff, wheels. They are bigger. Tires, still from Goodyear. Uh, well, are we ever going to get away from Goodyear in NASCAR? Probably not. It's just it's forever. It's a, it's a relationship that will never end. It, they'll probably end two years from now, as I say that. Down at the bottom, you can see horsepower to be determined based on track type and size. Uh, the rumor is currently, is from Matt Weaver, is that the short track and road courses will have 670 horsepower and the speedways will have 550. We'll talk about the 550 in a second. Uh, some people are disappointed with the six, what was it, 670 at the short tracks, and I actually agree with that number. I have been saying uh, you don't need too much horsepower at a short track. What you need is that torque in the engine. Um, and I'm okay. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with a range between 620 and 700. And so they went with 670. Now, I wish we could have something like a 620 at the intermediate tracks, but that's not the case. They're going with 550. What does this mean? Well... I don't know yet. We have to see what the spoiler size is. We have to see what kind of downforce uh, stuff there there is. And I'm just going to say this. If, if I see full throttle racing, I'm calling out the executives, the, especially those three guys that were on stage, the president, the president of competition and the senior vice president, who was looking very nervous, by the way, John, why are you looking so nervous? Your hand was shaking when you're holding the mic. Come on, man. Those three are going to get called out if I see any sort of resemblance of full throttle pack racing. Now, I don't mean, uh, let's say like, three laps on a restart, and then you actually have to lift. No, if I, if I see anything resorting 10 laps or 15 laps of wide open racing, I'm just downright going to call them liars. I mean, it's just that simple. Everything they said in that conference indicates that we should not be going full throttle, putting it back in the driver's hands, making the cars harder to drive. It shouldn't be full throttle. That just, it, it shouldn't, unless you're at Daytona and Talladega. That's just, it's simply, that is the case. Um, so hopefully... They're not lying. We'll see what they put. That 550 number, I want it bumped up, but again, we will find out. The dual exhaust, the rear end diffuser, everything else in the in the spec sheet, um, that is the car. It it really isn't too much different. I mean, but there's some a lot of well, actually, I lie. It's very different. I mean, for example, the <laughs> we forgot about this part. Pit stops next year are going to be completely different. You have the single lug nut on the tires, so how fast is a pit stop going to be? next season are you still do you still have two tire changers if there's two tire changers do they have to just go click off click and then click off? are we gonna see like eight second pit stops or are we gonna have four tire changers and we're gonna see like f1 style pit stops you know where it's like three seconds um there is uh, apparently there's a possibility later on not next year but later on that you're gonna see the uh the hose kind of fueling system that you see in in f1 and indycar uh that we could have the hose fueling system in nascar so then you can just pop the little hose in and you pop it right back out um i mean we're talking about modernizing the sport and i'm happy with that i'm not upset i, I think nascar needs modernization my only thing 
that the only thing that's holding me back with these guys is don't make me watch full throttle pack racing at intermediate tracks. That's it. I think everything else, we're on the right path. We have the right idea for adding more short tracks on the circuit. We have the right idea for adding more road courses. We have the right idea for adding street courses. I'm a big fan of that. Um, just, you know, make sure they're not very high speed because then you're getting into a little bit dangerous territory if they're too high speed. Uh, but, you know, street courses, I'm a fan of that. Um, there's, you know, I would love to take NASCAR to a Los Angeles street course, a New York street course, hit those big cities, bring NASCAR to town. That, that's something that I would be a massive fan of. You have F1 coming to Miami. Obviously, we have Homestead Miami down here, but you could do a Miami street course. I'm happy with the idea that they might be looking at that Chicago street course uh, a few years down the line. Um, Those are good things. I think they're on the right path. This car looks like they're on the right path. They've specced it. They've limited the teams from being able to really change it a lot. So I'm really happy about all that. Now we just have to see if it actually works. Guys, comment down below. Let me know what you think. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Send me messages, you know, but mainly comment down below. Let me know what you think. We have a conversation down here. Um, I'm like, I don't really care about the look of the car. I think the look of the car is great. I think it looks awesome. I care about how it drives and how it races. And I'm going to wait for more cup drivers to come out and really, you know, give their their thoughts on it. Uh, And we'll see. So we will see. I'm happy with the short track package. It should be 670. Intermediate one, a little bit iffy on that. The car itself is great. Uh, and tonight, if you don't know, which you should know, but if you don't, um, on iRacing, the Pro Invitational Series, you know the little series that they run on FS1 um, with the real-life drivers, they're racing this car. So they have collaborated with iRacing to have the car ready for Darlington. So, I mean, I'm not going to take too much account into that, to be honest. I'll watch it because it's, it's, it's a virtual next-gen car. But I'm not, it's it's like how that thing drives on iRacing ain't going to be how it drives in real life. No offense. I mean, the real life iRacing lately has not been the most realistic when it comes to translating the the car, you know, physics and everything. So we'll we'll, we'll see how it is. We'll have fun with it. Uh, I'm really happy with the car and I'm going to leave it there. Take care of yourselves. Uh, Again, if you guys want to help support the channel, Patreon link, you don't have to. You can always subscribe. I feel like I'm, you know, shouting out the Patreon more than subscribing. The main way to support the channel is to subscribe. You don't have to donate money to it. Just subscribe. It's literally it. It's all you have to do. And maybe hit the like button. That's it. So I got to bring that back more often. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the rest of the day. I am a burning egg in this room. Like literally I'm going to suffocate. It's like 90 degrees in here. All right. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.